The U.S. pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal or JCPOA on 8th May 2018. That was under its recently terminated former administration. With Joe Biden taking office as U.S. president, hopes ran high for that joint comprehensive plan of action, which he pledged to re-enter in his election campaign. But now he's ushering Iran to go first, to recommit to its obligations under the deal so the U.S. would follow by returning to the deal. Oh, but Iran insists, it was you that left the deal, you took the first step out, so you take the first step back, or else. A December urgency law is to get into action on the 21st of February, and that will mean the end of free visits for nuclear inspectors to Iran, who've been living in this country since the JCPOA of 2015, unless the new US administration returns to the deal unconditionally. But it looks like Joe Biden is banking on his four terms in office. Alas, action can't wait a full term. I'm Leila Faramazi and you're watching Iran Today. So, the Biden administration is now talking of mincing its way back into the deal only after Iran begins recommitting. The deal was between Iran and the UN Security Council permanent members, that's the US, UK, France, Russia, China and Germany. Under UN Security Council Resolution 2231, the purpose of the deal was to curb Iran's nuclear program in return for lifting UN economic nuclear-related sanctions off this country. Iran complied as verified 15 times, no less, by the UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA. Still, the US pulled out unilaterally and reinstated all UN sanctions as US sanctions. It has been a long-drawn process and now economic sanctions are practically as good as sanctions on food, health and medicine. Mr. Mackey is a political analyst who kindly makes the trip to Press TV studios for interviews. We had him on the show yet again. Given all America's deal-breaking during its former administration, the whole world doesn't trust that country anymore, let alone Iran. So what hope do you see really for the revival of the JCPOA? By signing the JCPOA, the Islamic Republic of Iran has shown that the only solution to the problems and all the challenges that exist in Iran's relations with the West can be resolved through dialogue and negotiation and that there's no issue that cannot be resolved. It's unlikely for the U.S. to be able to continue pushing its proposals and plans to return to the JCPOA. It's an issue that can be resolved. Making simultaneous and concurrent moves to return to commitments is a logical idea. It's unlikely that the European governments will stay on the U.S. side for long. They will try to lay the groundwork for lifting sanctions and returning to commitments by consulting and negotiating with the parties to the deal. Iran has come to a point where it refuses to sit and wait for its rights to be thrown at it breadcrumb at a time. So it decided to further exert pressure on Western signatories to the deal to get sanctions lifted once and for all. That is why on December 2, 2020, Parliament proposed the said law. The strategic act of the Islamic Consultative Assembly to remove sanctions. Mr. Izadi is Professor of American Studies. I'm sure you'll find his viewpoint interesting. The West insists on adding clauses to the JCPOA, such as interference with Iran's regional policy, scrapping its missile program. Where does this stem from? How much might it have to do with our regional rivals? I think it's uh, US imperialism, mm -hmm. basically. The United States uh, wants to dictate its policies towards Iran, whether people in the White House belong to the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. And uh, uh, US allies in the region basically take the lead from the United States. Uh, so I think the uh, main problem is the United States. Uh, and uh, the fact that Biden administration actually likes what Trump did to Iran, and that's a problem. 
Our experts say what they think of Iran's strategy of demanding a U.S. return to the deal before Iran recommits to lower levels of uranium enrichment with less advanced centrifuges in only the Natanz nuclear site. But please note, more important than a U.S. return to the deal is the U.S.'s lifting sanctions of this country. A U.S. return without sanctions relief would mean nothing. بر اساس منطق آمریکا و سه کشور اروپایی که همه تعهدات برجامی رو زیر پا گذاشتن اینها دیگه حق ندارن شرط و شروط برای برجام تعیین کنند در اول کار بعضی از تحریم ها رو نه همه تحریم ها رو موقتا تعطیل کردن دوباره برگشتن و بعد تحریم ها رو افزایش هم دادن اون طرفی که حق داره شرط معین کنه برای ادامه کار برجام ایران است علت هم این است که ایران از اول به تمام تعهدات برجامی خودش عمل کرد اگر میخوان ایران به تعهدات برجامی که چند تا تعهد برجامی رو لغو کرده برگرده باید آمریکا تحریم ها رو کلا لغو کنه اون هم نه به زبان و روی کاغذ که بگه لغو کردیم نه بایستی در عمل تحریم ها رو لغو کنن و ما راستی آزمایی کنیم The Iranian leader's recent speech in response to US policy has triggered Iranian strategy Mr. Abolfat is an expert on Iran-America relations and an asset to the TV company. Press TV borrows him from time to time. It appears Iran may have to further pressure other parties to the JCPOA, the Western parties to the JCPOA. What do you think Iran can now do? Iran has not Iran has not left the JCPOA. Iran remains a party to this multilateral agreement. Even a year after Donald Trump announced the U.S. withdrawal from the accord, Iran remained fully committed to the JCPOA. And the International Atomic Energy Agency issued periodic reports stating that Iran had fully complied with these obligations. But a year after it became clear that the Americans were not going to live up to their commitments and the Europeans were unable to meet their obligations, the Islamic Republic announced that it was gradually scaling back some of its commitments, while stressing that all those steps were reversible. Tehran said as soon as the other side, that is, the United States and Europe, fulfilled their obligations, it will go back into full compliance. Without sanctions relief, the deal would mean nothing because the whole point of the deal was that Iran show goodwill in proving its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes only in return for sanctions lifting to encourage foreign trade with Iran, therefore boosting this country's economy. Whereas, never mind industrial or arms imports, even foreign clothes are hard to come by in Iran now. The fact is that the solution to return to the JCPOA is not complicated. If there is a will to lift the sanctions and return to the JCPOA, it can be done with an executive order from U.S. President Joe Biden. But the Americans have always tried to have the upper hand in negotiations with Iran, even when the blame rests with them. As a first step in reviving the JCPOA, Iran not only expects sanctions to be lifted before it recommits, it demands to verify U.S. actions before recomplying. The next step would be for the U.S. to compensate this country and its trade partners. Compensate for the damage Donald Trump's sanctions have done us and companies that suffered secondary sanctions for dealing with Iran. The unilateral U.S. sanctions are deemed illegal by experts at large, by the way. As Parliament prepares to vote, I await my interviewee MP, whom I'll be bringing to you shortly with his viewpoint. It's the Parliamentary Deputy Speaker, Mr. Qazi Zadeh Hashemi, I bring you. We expect that after all these years that we showed unilateral tolerance, Americans will live up to their commitments. First, they need to prove that they are trustworthy and spout off after. The Americans, whether the Democratic Obama, whose vice president was Mr. Biden, or the Republican Trump, are unreliable to us and must act to gain our trust. It's that simple. Another MP I got to talk to is Mr. Rastine. 
It's his first tenure, but he appears to possess the passion to attempt long strides in any amount of time given. Time is running out to salvage the JCPOA, that they call a landmark international deal. We are days away from the end of the deal. The US and European countries should try and prize these remaining days by returning to their commitments, removing all sanctions, and facilitating the return of all the frozen assets of Iran to Tehran. Otherwise, the Islamic Republic of Iran has shown that it insists on the implementation of the parliament's resolution. We wrote the law to lift the sanctions according to Article 36 of the JCPOA, because the same law allows us to suspend some of our commitments if the West doesn't honor its obligations. We are still a party to the deal. We haven't withdrawn our participation from it. They need to carry out their commitments, so we do ours. Now, while Iran proposes more for more, the U.S. is mincing in with an offer or demand of less for less. And Iran's said law may be their excuse for this, whereas Iran's law is a reaction to the U.S. pullout and the EU's lack of commitment to the deal to begin with. The E3 are the UK, France and Germany. They pledged to safeguard Iran's interests against the US pullout by enacting an updated blocking statute on 7th August 2018 to nullify US sanctions on countries trading with Iran. This was followed by a couple of trade mechanisms finally known as INSTEX, Instrument in Support of Trade Exchanges. But nothing worked in the face of U.S. belligerence and European lack of will. Europe has for its part been trying to inch in with new demands to an already agreed deal, say curbing Iran's regional presence and scrapping its ballistic missile program when the deal was solely to supervise and control Iran's nuclear activity. But that backfired. Time for a short break. We'll be back in no time. I said the West strategy had backfired. Asking for more has meant getting less. Iran's parliament has uh, passed a law, uh, and I think it, the executive branch will follow that law. Uh, Iran uh, has a peaceful nuclear program. There is no reason for Iran to uh, follow every uh, restraint on its nuclear program that is under the nuclear agreement because the other side is not following it. Uh, so Iran will continue its uh, peaceful activities under NPT. Now what does Iran's said law exactly comprise? This policy of maximum or wise resistance manifested in maximum pressure on the US and the international community. It's inked in a range of arenas, while aiming to get all sanctions on Iran lifted with Iran compensated for damages, it demands Iran's nuclear accomplishments to date be leveraged. Iran has started enriching uranium to 20% purity. Iran has taken a major step in the production of metallic uranium, and the deadline for the implementation of a parliament resolution is imminent. So Iran has chosen maximum resistance and maximum retaliation against their maximum pressure. But so far, these Iranian measures haven't been enough. Our MP gives us an example of how far Iran might next go to exert further pressure on the West. Certainly, the Islamic Republic will end the additional cooperation with the IAEA based on this resolution. This means that the additional protocol, which is a set of extra rules setting Iran's diplomatic, technical and scientific relations with the IAEA, will surely expire, and Iran will end the voluntary implementation of the additional protocol.
هیچ کسی نمیتونه به آمریکا اعتماد داشته No one can trust the United States. The experience of negotiations and talks with Washington over the past decade has shown that the Americans are highly unreliable and have to be spoken to with distrust. Our narrative still goes on, but let's give a chance to other media outlets for a bit to see what they have to say on the issue. And what would be our other media outlets of the day? Newsweek and Ausart. Newsweek tells of how Iran is going to replace the West, possibly. Iran courts China, Russia as new nuclear deal with declining U.S. storms. Iranian officials are continuing to build stronger ties with Russia and China as Tehran faces what could be a prolonged standoff with President Joe Biden over any possible revival of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, or nuclear deal. Biden is demanding that Iran scale back its nuclear program in line with JCPOA restrictions before American sanctions are lifted. However, Iranian leaders have said they will not return to compliance until the U.S. eases sanctions and does the same. Tehran is casting around for allies to help offset American pressure, along with the threat from regional U.S. allies like Israel and Saudi Arabia. Russia and China have repeatedly spoken out against Trump's withdrawal from the deal and have urged Biden to recommit to the accord with no conditions. In recent weeks, Tehran has been lauding ties with both countries as the nuclear issue remains stalled. Now, French President Macron has offered to broker talks with Israel and Saudi Arabia present, and Aussat refers exactly to that. Iran snubs Macron's offer to mediate Washington-Tehran nuclear talks. Tehran has rejected French President Emmanuel Macron's offer to be an honest broker in talks between Iran and the U.S. The nuclear deal has no need for a mediator, Foreign Ministry spokesman Said Khatibzadeh told reporters, without specifically mentioning France but in response to a question about recent comments by the country's president. Khatibzad also insisted that there was no need to renegotiate the nuclear deal. When a document is written with such precision and length, it means it is not necessary to discuss it again. It is all there in more than 150 pages, he said, of the deal officially known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. The spokesman added that European states must themselves return to their commitments under the nuclear deal with Iran. Newsweek tells of how an Iranian commander has shown Iran doesn't have to be passive. Iran commander tells US take a lesson from military drills amid nuclear deal standoff. The commander of Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps, IRGC, is celebrating the service's most recent military drills saying the U.S. and other enemies should take a lesson from the firepower on display. IRGC Commander Major General Hossein Salami told reporters that the Great Prophet military exercises held last week, beginning February the 9th, in Iran's southwestern province of Khuzestan, showcased the service's authority, defense, resistance and aggression, according to Mir News Agency. The ground forces of the IRGC guarantee our security, independence, honor and dignity and they shone brightly in their latest war game, Salomi said, on the sidelines of the drill. The enemy should take a lesson from the firepower showcased by Iranian forces, he added, a reference to the US and regional enemies like Israel and Saudi Arabia. So that's it for the news segment. Do stay with me for the continuation of our own narrative. There's more to Iran's December law. It also demands the blockade of European initiatives to include the issue of Iran's ballistic missile development, enriching uranium to a high level, 20%, enriching uranium using advanced generation centrifuges, the passage in Majlis or Parliament of legislation for non-cooperation with the UN nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, and expulsion of its inspectors. More demands coming up in a bit. The message of the Parliament's strategic action to the United States was that one cannot claim they adhere to the rule of law and maintain favorable diplomatic relations, all the while disrupting the international law with their inappropriate and destructive behavior. Iran's maximum resistance policy further demands
Officials stated that the United States will sanction whoever deals with Iran or purchases its oil. Also in September 2019, new sanctions targeted the Iranian National Bank. On 21st February 2020, Iran was placed on the FATF blacklist. FATF being the Financial Action Task Force, an intergovernmental organization for combating money laundering. Next, the U.S. proposed to extend the global arms embargo on Iran. But the United Nations Security Council rejected that resolution. Hence, the U.S. moved to unilaterally trigger snapback sanctions, although it had walked away from the Iran nuclear deal and no longer had logical, legitimate claim on it. It seems the Biden administration it doesn't know if they like the Trump administration policies towards Iran or not. It seems that they criticize Trump a lot, but they actually like Trump policies towards Iran, and they want to keep those policies, and they keep talking about leverage. They like leverage, which means they like sanctions. In September 2020, then-President Trump imposed sweeping new sanctions on Iran to curb its missile and conventional arms programs. On the 8th of October 2020, the U.S. targeted 18 Iranian banks. Question is, why this pursuit of a maximum pressure policy when it has failed? The goal was basically to bring Iran to its knees by bringing its oil exports down to zero, whereas those exports have slowly but steadily only increased, after a serious low, of course, since the U.S.'s harshest ever sanctions. And now, oil analysts foresee an additional 500,000 Iranian oil barrels coming back on the market in the next two to three months, possibly with U.S. approval. The intensification of sanctions is no longer a major concern for Iran, because there are no more sanctions left to be imposed now. Even if the Europeans want to join the United States in introducing sanctions, there is nothing left to boycott. As a result, sanctions as a tool has lost its function against Iran. The revolution's leaders take on the matter pretty much sums it all up. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said in reference to former U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton and his boss Donald Trump, one of those first-rate fools said they would celebrate New Year 2019 in Tehran. That person has been sent to history's trash can, and his boss has also been kicked out of the White House with disgrace. But the Islamic Republic is still standing on its feet with God's grace. The nuclear deal was to control Iran's nuclear program and none else. But for argument's sake, Foreign Minister Zarif said, when Iran has no nuclear weapons, talk about missiles with nuclear warheads is meaningless. Secondly, the parties to the JCPOA, whose annual sales of weapons to the region have amounted to over $100 billion, are in no position to tell Iran to forego its missile defenses. The Europeans and Americans should know that we will not discuss what has already been resolved. This would be against the rules of negotiation. That's it for today. Thanks for watching from the whole team. The episode has come to an end, but remember the show goes on. So do return to the box at the same time next week and each week after, as there's no telling where we'll take you. If today is the legislative, next time can be the judiciary or executive or anywhere else. Don't forget to leave your comments and topic requests in the meantime. Bye for now.